watching A Better You and welcome to The Latest, where we talk about the latest media, the arts, dance, books, and upcoming organizations. I'm Harlem and I'm 14. I'm Dallas and I'm 11. I'm Camille and I'm 11. I'm Ali and I'm 12. And now for latest news about the arts. Many schools don't provide ad adequate funding for arts programs and I feel like this is, this is something that needs to be fixed. Camille, you go to an art school, do you receive adequate funding for your arts programs? Um, yes, I think that the arts programs are, they're very, they're very fun to do because I do dance and I think it's really fun to do and they also have like art and piano and musical theater and drama so lots of kids at my school say that they really enjoy it. All right, then Alea, you go to a school that is not based around the arts. Do you feel that the arts programs receive enough funding? I I don't think they receive enough funding, but also we focus more on education and making sure that we that we're successful in life. Like the like we're about to take map testing tomorrow, and some some of us are going to take it next week. And so we they want us to focus hard on map testing so that we can do good on the EOGs and, su and be successful in life. Right. Dallas, what about your school? Do you receive good funding? I don't think we receive good funding because there is only a certain amount of things we get to choose from for that are art stuff and then when we choose from them we don't always get what we chose and we get into something we might not like. At my school at the beginning of the year we have to raise money just to be able to have music for a choir class and to be able to receive transportation for certain field trips. I feel that they need to provide a little more funding because they provide so much funding for athletes for athletic events and while a lot of people enjoy that, people also enjoy arts, I mean just all of the arts programs and so I think they should get a little more recognition. Yeah. So. Uh, speaking of the arts, Camille, what, any like, news about dance? Um, well I take dance at Northwest School of the Arts and um, my teacher Ms. McLeod, she really pushes us to make sure that we have down all the vocabulary and she the reason why she does push us is because she wants us to learn at a certain pace but she wants to take our time and make sure that we get the movements but we just had an upcoming test on in dance and we had to do um, we had to write a position and all the different counts for a movements that we do and different practices that we do and I also go to Charlotte Ballet and my teacher Mr. Renee and Mr. Sarkis they also push us to make sure that we also have the right techniques and that we have fun and just stay focused. And do you feel like you're pushed too hard or do you think that it's always, it always has a point and that it's always necessary? I think that it has a point and that it's not it is necessary, but not that necessary, because they just had upcoming auditions for the Nutcracker, and I didn't audition because I have homeworks and projects and different other hobbies and activities that I do outside of school, so I didn't audition for the Nutcracker, but I usually do do the Nutcracker, but I just didn't do it this year because of homework and stuff. Other school commitments, right? Do you feel that sometimes they put these other school commitments in front of the arts? like? athletic events and practices? No, not really. We don't have any athletic practices because they focus on the arts more than practice and education. And if you don't have like an AB average, then you might get consequences for your arts. But yeah, so I think that's what. Yeah. Okay, well, what about a school that doesn't focus on arts? So we have a lot of sports where I go and we don't have a lot of arts, but you have the choice to take band or orchestra during school year for encore. You have to do, do a play once a year. You can also take drama for encore, but we focus, I think we focus more on sports than we do on arts. I feel that my school is the same way, and some students have actually had to choose between doing an after school sport and taking a class during the day, which I don't think makes sense because they're two separate activities and they are two different times and I feel that they should be able to do both if they really wish they could. So for example, four students can take choir because they were in a certain sport at my school and the coach for that sport wanted them to take a different class. So they pulled them out of choir and I don't think that's really fair, do you? 
It's not really because the kids, they have more than one talent and they want to express all of them. And how are you supposed to express them all if they're not allowing you to take more than one class on that helps you express the talents? Exactly. I see that. Um, so, um, so have, do you know of any people, like dancers, that have faced these problems with having to put other commitments before their art? Um, not really, but I, I noticed a dancer, Misty Copeland, when she was young, she couldn't, she couldn't attend dance practices because her mom couldn't take her there because it was too far for her home or she had other activities to do. But I think that it was a great commitment and she's a beautiful dancer now and I'm a fan of hers. I actually admire her work too. Um, so tell us more about Misty Copeland. Um, well, Misty Copeland is um, an African-American dancer who recently just got promoted as, I think, the sister or um, principal or teacher at um, American Ballet Theater. And I think that's a really great thing because they haven't had an African-American teacher in about 75 years or a decade, and that's really amazing. And I also, the some professional dancers at Charlotte Ballet, they do a really good job also, and they also admire Missy Copeland, and so do the teachers. And Missy Copeland teaches dancers that inspire her that it doesn't matter what your body looks like as long as you try your best and you work hard and you believe in yourself and believe in your dream and progress in your work. Right, and I think that's one of the reasons that I admire her. I've read articles about her in magazines such as Teen Vogue where she told her story, talked about her message, and mm -hmm. just about her beliefs, and I think she's a very beautiful dancer and just a wonderful person. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about the latest books with um, so I like books because they take me to other places, especially when I'm sad, they can cheer me up because I put myself in another character's shoes as I read and they could be in a happy situation and it makes me happy or they could be in a worse situation than mine. I realize my situation could be worse than theirs or like theirs, making me feel better about my situation. And so I think people should read more to help them with their problems. Also, studies show that when you read, it, also, it helps with your vocabulary. There are five books that I think teens should read are The Chocolate Wars, Wonder, Freaks, Pr The Princess of Trillion, and 12 Minutes to Midnight, because those are really good books. I like to read fiction books, and I also like to, I like to read fiction books because they are not real and it's not the real war world pushing down on me was, and so I think that books can help change the world and not always it doesn't always have to be the video games or the the sports or anything else sometimes you just need a good book to take away all the bad things in your life right. um, we're going to take a short break but we'll be back soon with the latest The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. Thanks for joining A Better You and welcome back to the latest where we'll be continuing our conversation about books. So we were talking about your top five list of books, so now I'd like to open up the question to the rest of the table. What are your favorite books that you can do? Um, well, the current book that I'm reading is called The Isle of the Lost by Melissa de la Cruz. And the book that I'm reading is about 
how, you know, evil villains like Maleficent, Jafar, and the evil queen and Snow White and stuff. So it's about their their sons and daughters and how their evolution went on. And right now I'm in about the middle of the book or almost done with it. And I'm at a point where Maleficent's daughter Evie is looking for her mother's stone like her evil stone and there actually was a movie that came out about it so I watched the movie and now I'm comparing and contrasting about it so that's what I'm doing and also um Carl Cr- Deville her son yes Carlos um he, he instead of being like evil he's kind of on the nice side but he still he still has evil in him but he still doesn't like dogs and he's more of an inventor and a scientist more than an evil villain like Mal Maleficent's daughter and um also Evie I mean she she is the evil queen's daughter and she's like a beauty princess she loves beauty like her mother says that she can never be as beautiful as her and Evie takes that as not a compliment but a judgment and she's kind of concerned about that since she's been stuck in the castle for almost a decade but she's at that point where she doesn't really like for her mother to judge her anymore so she's trying to stand up for herself but her mother just won't let her and then Jafar's son um Jay he's more of like a ladies man he likes to steal stuff a lot like his father like anything he sees he will steal like in like a snap of a finger he will just steal it like that like he will literally like come to your house and steal your chandelier without you knowing but that's how sneaky he is and he's one of my favorite characters because he's really funny and he has good comments but he's still evil so yeah that's what my book's about so is it just portraying them as regular teenagers or in a magical yeah they're they're still regular teenagers so Basically, there's a dome surrounding the evil island, and then on the other side, it's like water separating them from the good, uh, the good children, it's like Cinderella and um, Aurora, like all of those good people. They're on the other side, while the evil people are right here, and there's water separating it. And since there's a dome around it, no magic can come on the Isle of the Lost, is what the island is named, and. Right now, the four of them are on a journey to, um, the four of them are on a journey to travel to Ordon and find the evil scepter, but yeah, so that's what it's about. All right, so what about you, Dallas? I am currently reading Eleanor and Park, and I really enjoy the book because it's about two people who are slowly falling in love throughout their high school year. All right, so... What are the names of the characters? What are there, they like? There's Eleanor and there's Park, and they're very, I'm guessing, like, different, kind of. And Eleanor, she's more, she doesn't show who she really is because she's afraid. And Park, he wants, he's like kind of the person who wants people to show who they are right when they, he meets them. Um... So when is the story set? When does it take place? It doesn't have a time range in it, so... But it seems like modern day, but they are talking about stuff that didn't happen this year, like in modern day. Okay, I see. Okay. Well, one of my current favorite books is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Um, it was recently turned into a movie, actually, with, I can't remember the actress's name, but it was, it was a really good movie, translated very well. The main plot is that there is a girl, she's a celloist, and she, ha- she has a pretty good life. I mean, she has a really nice boyfriend, she's got a really supportive friend, she auditioned for Juilliard because she's very good with the cello. And um, it starts out with, ki- with a snow day, and it seems like it's just going to be a regular story. So they dri- so they decide to drive and have lunch with some family friends, but they have a massive car accident, and the parents are killed on impact. And you don't get you don't get much information about her little brother at first, but 
you slowly kind of figure out the conditions of everybody else. And basically, the whole story is about her decision of whether she should stay and live the rest of her life or if she should give up and decide to be with the rest of her family. And I felt like it was really, it was really intriguing. It was really, it was really well written. I liked the way that um, she would flash back to different times and then come back to the present and fill you in on everything that's going on. So I just thought it was a really great book and the ending was definitely just amazing. All right. So that wraps up our conversation about books and now we're going to talk to Dallas about upcoming businesses. So there is a business that we are working on. It's called Brainy Beauty and they are trying to help girls rely on their brain more than their beauty for things. So we're helping girls with goal setting and leadership and we're just we're still getting it together but we would like to have it out by spring of 2016 and we just want to show that females are better than they look right now. they are better than they look so their brains are big and huge they have they're very intelligent and it's not just because they have on a cute dress and stuff they're not all based on what they're looking at right so does this business have any products out or they don't have any out yet but they are trying we are trying to get out t-shirts and book bags and purses and stuff as soon as possible and um, so what's significant about these t-shirts and products? The t-shirts, um, they have slogans like, my brain is my beauty, brains over beauty. They have very encouraging slogans on it. All right. Um, so do you guys seem interested in this business? Do you think it's a good thing for mm -hmm. the community? How do you think girls could benefit from this? Um, I think that girls should benefit from this from not judging what people wear, like if a girl wears KDs and Jordan and another girl wears Toms and Keds, it doesn't matter what you look like or what you dress like as long as you have the brains and you have the knowledge and um, not that you know a lot of stuff, that, but that you educate over judging people of what they wear and what they do. I think that's very, very well said. Um, we're going to take another break. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Cada libro es una aventura, esperando convertirse en realidad. Visita nuevos mundos. Encuentra nuevos amigos. Y descubre el poder de la lectura. Visita read.gov y lee The Princess of Mars, la primera novela que presenta a John Carter. Un mundo nuevo te espera. Lee. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. And 
and welcome back to a better you and thanks for watching the lately so now we're going to be talking about music so my personal favorite my personal top five favorite songs on the radio right now are can't feel my face by the weekend um let's see chains by nick jonas one last time by ariana grande and let's see who else um, I still kind of like Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars, even though it's it's getting a little old now. And definitely, she's kind of hot by Five Seconds of Summer because it, despite the title, it talks more about just how it's okay if you don't have everything together with your life and stuff like that. And it's not it's not just about a girl, contrary to popular belief. I promise. Um, so, what are some of you guys' favorite songs? Um, well, my favorite artist is Megan Trainer because she teaches girls that it doesn't matter what your body looks like or how big in size you are, as long as you believe in yourself and you have the courage to stand up for yourself and your friends. And my favorite song by her is "What If I" by um, is "What If I." And another favorite song by her that I like is um, "Like I'm Gonna Lose You" featuring John Legend. So I like Whitney Houston because I want to be a great singer and I think she's an amazing singer because I've seen videos of her and she gets sit there just singing and she, she'd be sweating on her forehead and everything and I'd be like, I'm going to be able to sing like that someday. I'm going to be able to sit down and put on a great show and, and people will know I'm showing effort because I'm, I'm going to start sweating on stage. <laughs> and one of my, some of my favorite songs by her are Where Do Broken Hearts Go, I Have Nothing, and I Will Always Love You. Oh, the last two songs. My favorite artist is Beyonce, and my favorite song is Pretty Hurts because it's expressing, like, you don't have to really be beautiful. And, like, yeah, you don't have to be beautiful to be able to do all these things. And it says stuff like when you're doing all these things to your body, it is going to hurt. So, with that song, do you think it's kind of portraying the message of you shouldn't have to conform to what society thinks yeah. and how they think that a perfect person should look? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I would say that my favorite artist is Ariana Grande. Um, I've followed her for a really long time. I've been a fan of her since 2010, when she first started on Victorious, and I've I've been following all of her albums, just all of her shows. I've seen the Broadway show that she was on when she was younger, and I really like all of her music. It's it's not the message that really that I pay attention to. I love her voice, her range. Just she has an ama she's an amazing range. She has she has the ability to do great whistle, whistle tone. She has a really strong voice, but she can also be really light. I just I love the variety of music that she can make with her voice and I feel that I would I would love to be able to have that kind of voice one day so um, okay so are there any upcoming albums that you guys are excited about um, well I I think that Megan Trainer is coming up with another album um, I think on Instagram or like social media it, it's talking about how she's coming up with another album and how she's really excited about writing it, but it's a lot of work, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm waiting and hoping for that to come out. Yeah. Well, I don't usually get excited over albums, but whenever I go to you onto YouTube, sometimes ads, ads will pop up and it'll say Prince's new album. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm not really all into albums. I just like listening to the music. Right. But it... I think I think because of the ads, Prince is, is going to be coming out with a new album. I'm not sure. I don't know any albums that are coming out, but I'm not sure if Nick Jonas, if his album is out or anything, but I'm waiting for his album. Yeah. Well, of course, being a huge Ariana Grande fan, I am very excited for her new album to come out. She's releasing her new single on the 30th of October, so patiently slash impatiently waiting for that um, and it's not going to be coming out for a really long time I don't think but definitely the next 21 Pilots album because their last one was really great and I really enjoyed that one so um, 
Yeah. So, is there a certain genre that you guys are interested in mainly? Um. Well, a genre that I'm really interested in is um. You know how Taylor Swift, she changed from country, like, pop music, like the Shake It Off song and video? Yeah, I like music like that because it helps me move and get me excited about stuff. Like, if I'm in a sad mood, then, like, I can listen to one of my favorite artist songs and it'll lift me up or either it, um, it'll give me some type of emotion. And that's what I love about that's what I love about Megan Trainor songs. They give you that kind of feeling that makes you either want to jump up in excitement or like go cry and bang your head on a wall. But um, but sometimes um, I never do that. But but um, sometimes that's what I feel like doing, and that's why I love her songs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I feel about pop music. I think it's like really great because it gets you in a really good mood, and it just makes you want to dance around, jump around with all of your friends, and just kind of be happy and stuff like that. Um, well, I like music in general, as, well, as long as it's something that I can listen to and something I'll pay attention to. But, but I have to say my favorite kind of music is music that focuses on romance, because I really like a romance. Yeah, I do too. My favorite type of music is just music that's fast, that you can get up and just dance to. And I don't, I don't like music that you have to be slow and stuff. Right. It's like fast, whatever you want to do. Like Sam Smith. Yeah. Yeah. He writes a lot of slow songs, but they're really good. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on A Better You, and thank you for watching the latest. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday where we'll talk about more media, the arts, dance, books, and upcoming businesses. Bye.